Today we got a chance to be in Erica Monte's second grade classroom. This is a second grade biliteracy classroom with the 90-10 model here at the site. So the kindergartners are in 90% Spanish, 10% English, and it goes down by 10%. So by second grade, she's 70% in Spanish, 30% in English. Propiedades nos ayudan. Propiedades nos ayudan. Observar y clasificar. A observar y clasificar. They're working on the next generation science standards, looking at states of matter and its properties and how to describe and characterize it. The language function for this unit is the language of description. When working with students and instructing in a biliteracy model, it's important to use both languages as assets. So it's important for students to be able to build knowledge in their strongest language, build in their home language, so the unit is grounded, in this case, in Spanish. Entonces, Salón 4, ya sabemos que hemos aprendido de las propiedades de materia por mucho tiempo. Primero empezamos con agua, mira a la pared, con agua y rocas en español. Y después, miran adelante, a Aprendimos de madera en inglés, pero esta mañana vamos a aprender y usar el lenguaje de descripción en español. In today's lesson in Spanish, students each chose a different type of wood, one of the forms of matter that they're studying, and then used a web to describe it. So they had a chance with their partner to use this oral language to practice describing what the different characteristics and properties of wood might be. La madera blanca es como, es, es como un perro jugando en la playa. Las características de, de, de madera es que es suave. Las características de wood son thick, secas y rápidas. The teacher then passed out some paper and they were independently involved in doing a web. The different color pens allowed the teacher for some assessment when she got to go back and look through those around what kind of language her students were using. This is one of those places where we think about our graphic organizers and SEAL using them into, through, and beyond. The students are comfortable with a the web. They know what the language of description is. They know what a simile is. And now they're applying all of that content in an independent setting. La madera es dura, um, a veces es mojada y llena de baches. Es como la piel de un elefante. When we talk about transfer or bridging, we're talking about teaching students about the way in which two languages work, the different language structures, and helping them to do that metalinguistic compare and contrast between the two languages. Hemos hecho mapas excelentes usando adjetivos, frases de adjetivos, lenguaje de descripción y vocabulario académico. Hasta también algunos usaron símiles para describir su madera. Pero hoy vamos a hablar que cada idioma tiene una forma diferente de describir. Y cada idioma pone las palabras juntas diferentes cuando describimos. También podemos describir madera de cara. Lo podemos describir en, en diferentes maneras. ¿qué? Puede ser madera plana, madera delgada. Eso es la forma. Uh, podemos describir la textura, que ya sabemos es madera áspera. Cuando estamos describiendo en español, tenemos primero el sustantivo y segundo tenemos los adjetivos. It's very important that the teacher as a language model maintains very clear language separation. And so today, Erica, when she put on her scarf that that signal to the students from this point on, I'm going to be speaking in English. You might be referencing this side in Spanish, but I'm going to now maintain the language of instruction. And now, we're going to be studying in English. So, uh, let's take a look at the ways that we can describe wood in English. Let's start with the color. Uh, we can say that it is brown wood. Brown wood. So everyone say brown wood. brown wood. We can describe the form. 
which Stacked is wood. everybody wood. Okay. the weight is it heavy is it light um so again here is the noun can somebody put this adjective in its correct place got in okay so we'll see exactly where it goes okay thank you got in can we read this everyone lie wood so now do you have a question diego or comment. If it says wood brown, it's not going to make sense, but it's going to make sense if you say the wood is brown. Exactly. So I'm just going to repeat what Diego said. It just doesn't make sense in English to say wood brown. In English, we say brown wood. We're going to do the same thing, but now share a sentence in English. So can we read this together, everyone? It, it is brown wood. It is rough wood. The adjective, does it become, does it go before or after the noun? Before. Before. So can you think now of another sentence in English? It is hmm, wood. It is brown wood. It is flat wood. Okay. It is rough wood. It is smooth wood. It is soft wood. It is flat wood. It is rough hard wood. It is flat and it is it is it is flat and brown wood. In Erica's second grade classroom, she has all three levels of English language learners. She has her emerging students, her expanding students, and her bridging students. So she began her designated ELD lesson with all of the students together. They began by doing two different chants. One was around wood that they'd been learning about in English. The other chant was around the language of description and the w different ways and the different purposes that we use language of description. So everyone, let's do our description chant. Water can be solid, liquid, or gas. Water has specific properties and mass. It is changed by heating or by cooling and freezing. If you tell its qualities, you describe. After those chants, all of the students came down to the carpet and she began her designated ELD by going over the lesson objectives. In this case, the students were going to, by the end, take two or three sentences and work on condensing them into one rigorous academic sentence. The wood is used for carving. If I kept going, it would get kind of boring if I continue to say the wood is, the wood is, okay, the wood is, it would just get kind of boring, especially if I was speaking or writing. So I'm gonna show you how I can take these two sentences and condense it into one. Oh. I am going to take off the adjective, okay? And we know now that, we know now that the adjective goes, does it go before or after the noun? Oh, in English, does it go before or after? Before. It goes before. If it's in English, it goes before. So I'm going to leave this up here. I might even get rid of it. And I'm going to squeeze it into our second sentence. So I'm going to need to cut and take this apart. And now we can see, OK. I might need even to cut a little more. Should we have a period in the middle no, of a sentence? No. no, no, that wouldn't be correct. So I'm just gonna slip that off. We know that the wood is solid. solid. The, the wood is brown. And the wood is used for houses. So I'm taking directly from this tree map to come up with the next three sentences. Where are we going to be putting solid and brown in this? Okay, should oh, I put I it right here? The solid brown wood, the you solid take off the wood. and then put on solid and brown with the, with the wood is used. Oh, awesome. the, Thank the you. solid so, brown wood or brown. This sentence is just a little different from the first one, okay? Yeah. Um, when we use two adjectives, 
we actually need to make a pause by adding a comma after the first adjective. Oh, yeah. okay. Insert a comma in there. If you are in the ELD group solids, you are gonna walk to your desk and you will have sentence strips to write sentences. The wood is used for carving? Yeah. Okay, now, what is The rough? wood is rough? The wood is rough. Like the wood the changes when it gets burned. The wood is used for furniture? Yeah, okay. Put it right there. We're gonna cut this one because the wood is used for solid furniture. You had to cut this the one. The furniture? And cut this. The, the, the tan wood the, is used for solid the, furniture. Yeah, because we're going to have to cut this one, cut this one, and all of these before we can make a sentence. When the students had finished constructing their sentences, they were instructed to write those in their academic process journal, and some added sketches as well. Some of the students that finished early were then invited to go over to the research center where there is a variety of other materials and objects and to use those same sentence strips to continue to expand on this. The symbols in this, is, I think it's a little bit liquid and the bubbles are like freeze. The teacher has five students who are emerging students and the rest are expanding and bridging. When she excused the expanding and bridging students to work independently with a partner, she kept with her emerging students. She did the same lesson again, but this time she was providing more of teacher scaffold. Today we are working on condensing two sentences. Okay, let's work on our first sentence. So you can say the wood is smooth, the wood is rough, Try to think of as many sentences using the wood is hmm. And remember, a few days ago, we even did a semantic gradient from soft, smooth, furry, woodly, bumpy, rough, and spiky. So there are other words you can use if you want to. This, the um, wood is like a little bit of bumpy. Okay, can we say the wood is bumpy? The, the wood is bumpy. Anything else, Cindy? Um, the wood is, um, the like. Oh, so how would we say that in English? Um, the wood oh. is smooth. Rough. Smooth. Can we say the wood um, is rough? The wood, the wood is, is rough. rough. It might be even like rough. scratchy. Can we say the wood is scratchy? The, the wood, wood is scratchy. All right, so we can leave the word the. What else are we going to need here now? Because I can work um, condensing. The solid. Solid. Andres, can you cut out the word solid? And we're, again, we might need to cut out that period. Okay, so here we go. The, the solid, solid wood is used for, for furniture. furniture. Okay, and now we know we can switch out any words we want. Instead of solid, you can say the brown wood is used for furniture. The, the goal of a bioliteracy program is this high levels of academic language in English and Spanish. So we don't want to just move them into English and abandon the Spanish. It's really around keeping those high levels of language, reading, writing, um, and oral language in both languages.